Hello friend, welcome to Stack Phi and if you help me to solve today's physics problem till the end of the video, then you get a cookie. So let's go. Hey what's up everyone, I hope all of you are doing great. This is Rami Zaman and let's start our video with x-rays. This video will be a short and simple video on x-rays. After completing this video, I hope you will be able to do any kind of question that might come in JE without any problem. Okay. So x-rays form a part of the electromagnetic spectrum and it was actually discovered accidentally by a physicist named Wilhelm Röntgen in the year 1895. As the nature of the new radiation could not be explained immediately during the time of discovery, it was termed as x-rays just like we use x variable for and something unknown in algebra. Okay. Now let us quickly check out few properties of x-rays. Okay. Now X-rays have a very short wavelength ranging from 0.0001 to 10 angstrom. Of course they show reflection, refraction, interference, diffraction, polarization, this kind of properties under suitable conditions. They are unaffected by electric field and magnetic field indicating they are not beams of charged particles unlike cathode rays. They travel in straight lines with the speed of light. They have high penetrating power, shorter the wavelength, the greater is the power of penetration and they penetrate more in low density substances and less in high density ones and they affect photographic plate when i say affect photographic plate i mean they actually blacken the photographic plate that means in reality a photographic plate is somewhat whitish in nature and when the x-ray falls on that plate it turns in black color okay now if you just observe a simple x-ray image of someone's left hand you can see that these white portions are uh, those portions of the photographic plate where the x-ray is not falling actually. These surrounding is totally black because all the x-rays are falling because there is nothing to stop here. But here the bones uh, actually st stopping the x-ray which were trying to fall on the plate. Okay. Now as you see in this region the density of the bones is much more than the fingertips or as you go towards the fingers. Okay. And the knuckles also there are very small lower density than this wrist area now from seeing this we can say that how our density of the bone varies with uh, position of the hand anyways uh, you will do much more experiments on x-rays once you go in engineering in metallurgy or chemical engineering that is something we will discuss later on now how x-rays are actually produced now this is the arrangement of a coolidge tube Okay, so this is a vacuum chamber made up of glass. This is a target material. This is a filament which uh, heats up this metal which will create thermionic electrons and these electrons are accelerated by this very high potential difference. Okay, now when those electrons falls on the target material, they are stopped by this target material and hence they radiate some energy by the cost of their accelerated energy. There is a running water system to keep the target material normal temperature because continuous heating of electron will create a rise in temperature. So this running water maintains a stable temperature of this target material. When these accelerated electrons are stopped by this target radiation come out from this chamber. Okay. Now when these radiations are observed or studied properly by high precise spectroscope we see that the intensity varies with lambda like this okay now this intensity is varying as you can see it is a continuous in nature there is some minimum wavelength associated for each and every accelerating potential difference but here you can see that along with this continuous curves there are few spikes available now as you can see the spikes are only available for low value of target material, low z value of target material. Whereas for high z value of target material you won't see any peaks. Okay, first let me just uh, check the nomenclature here. These continuous lines are actually the continuous x-rays and these peak lines are the characteristic radiations. Okay, Char or we can say characteristic x-rays. So what does that mean? Why they are produced and we'll discuss within a few seconds. X-ray spectra can be divided into two parts. Please listen properly. We'll divide the continuous spectra and the characteristic spectra separately. Now for understanding the continuous spectra, you need to divide the X-ray spectra into two levels. Okay, One is in bulk level 
and one is in atomic level okay so let us understand what is bulk level when all those accelerated electrons from this metal falls on the target metal okay each electron were having and total energy of e times v where v is the potential difference across these two cathode and anode anode and this v is actually kilovolt is in the order of kilovolts okay i am considering all the energy gained by that by all those electron is actually utilized to create a radiation okay now of course all the energy won't be used right and of course all the energy won't be lost also so few portion few fraction of the total energy will be utilized for creating the radiation but for maximum condition considering that whole of this energy is utilized for radiation so that will create maximum frequency hence minimum wavelength so hc by lambda mean equals to ev okay so that will give you the cut off wavelength so the formula for minimum wavelength that we see here in the continuous spectra this lambda minimum is this formula this one okay so you can memorize it that's your choice so from here we can see that the probability of electrons of those accelerated electrons to loss all the energy in the form of radiation is zero actually and of course probability of those electron to lose all the energy and not creating it into radiation is also zero so in between two minima there should be one maxima okay so there is some wavelength whose intensity is maximum for a given potential difference so that pretty much explains the continuous spectra okay of x rays but uh, what about this characteristic radiation why do we observe these peaks okay to understand those peaks we need to understand this process in atomic level now see if some highly energetic electron okay accelerated electron is coming here and it knocks out an electron from an orbital so let us consider the k orbital okay now this electron comes here hits this one it goes away now there is a vacancy created of course the probability of filling this vacancy is more for these electron the neighborhood electrons that is for from the l shell and the second most probability is to fill that vacancy from the m shell now there is not a single atom right now there are billions and billions of target atom so in some atoms the vacancy will be filled up from the from an electron coming from the l shell some atoms it will be filled up by the m shell right vacancy that is created on the k shell when it gets filled up by an electron from the l shell it will create a k alpha spike k alpha spike similarly a k beta spike a k gamma spike now this thing this knocking out of the electron will happen only if this power is less that means the atomic number of the target metal is less okay for high atomic number this uh, sp spikes you won't get because there is a very less probability of this electron to get knocked off similarly we'll get l alpha l beta lines if an electron from the l shell is removed and that vacancy will be filled up by the immediate next shell i hope you get the idea so theoretically you will get these series of spikes okay along with the superimposed on the continuous spectra but in reality you won't see this much spikes okay and when i say spikes that means on the intensity spectrum you'll get see you'll get to see some sharp lines which will represent the k alpha k beta k gamma or the l alpha l beta l gamma series okay but in reality you won't see these many spikes you'll get to see only two or three maximum mainly two okay for each k l m so theoretically there should be infinite number of spikes okay but you won't observe most of them anyways so this is the reason for the k beta and k alpha now of course as you can see that the wavelength for k alpha line will be greater than the k beta that's why k alpha comes towards right and k beta comes towards left of the graph okay i hope you understand so that's the reason for the characteristic spectra now the characteristic means characteristic of the target metal okay so this has nothing to do with the continuous spectra okay 
characteristic spectra is only due to the property of the target metal which where will be the location of these spikes that also depends on the target metal so continuous spectra is totally dependent on the energy with which the electrons are accelerated characteristic spectra is totally dependent on the target metal anyways these things you need to remember now mosley did some investigation on this uh, x-ray using about 40 plus target materials he observed the k series l series and the m series for each and every target material and he made this graph actually now as you can see that atomic number is decreasing downwards okay sorry increasing downwards and as the atomic number increases the wavelength for the k series decreases of course it will decrease okay uh, because high energy photons will emit out if if we could knock out an electron from the k shell but as you move upwards that means as the atomic number is decreasing uh, the k series wavelength is also increasing uh, two separate lines so, so one line shows the k alpha and another one is for the k beta this is just for knowledge purpose not much helpful for ex for our exam but as you can see for a given atomic number for example 59 here as you can see that there is a k and there is an l and m he is not getting only because this maybe the spike is not that sharp now the most important thing was the plotting of the frequency versus atomic number graph for the k series okay now as he had drawn the frequency root over frequency versus the atomic number graph he got a straight line which makes a slight intercept on the atomic number axis on along the x-axis okay from there we can see that the frequency of the k alpha lines follows a relation with the atomic number of the target material like this and for k alpha line okay b is equal to 1 nearly equal to 1 but we can do it with 1. Now Mosley showed that it would be more logical to arrange elements in the periodic table in order of increasing atomic number instead of atomic weight. So this is the most important uh, conclusion of Mosley's work. Now when this was done it removed certain anomalies in the order of some element in the periodic table of Mendeleev. Now let us try to solve a simple question that came in JE Advanced 2020. In an X-ray tube, electrons emitted from a filament carrying current I hit a current anode. So filament means, let us check the diagram once again. So this is the filament here. Carrying current I hit target anode at a distance D from the cathode. The target is kept at a potential V higher than the cathode resulting in emission of continuous x-rays and characteristic x-rays if the filament current i is decreased to i by 2 now if the filament current is decreased to i by 2 it will emit less electrons hence uh, the intensity will decrease now potential difference v is increased to 2v and the separation d is reduced to d by 2 so this line this last portion is not useful okay distance it doesn't matter the electrons are accelerated by the same potential difference so distance between cathode and anode is useless so the cutoff wavelength will reduce to half and the wavelength of the characteristic x-rays will remain the same okay because characteristic x-rays depends on the target material it doesn't change and we know that cutoff wavelength is directly proportional to 1 by v so of course the cutoff wavelength will reduce to half the cutoff wavelength as well as the wavelengths of the characteristic x-rays will remain the same no wrong the cutoff wavelength will reduce to half and the intensities of all the x-rays will decrease yes it will decrease because the filament con current decreases to half hence uh, it will release less thermionic electrons less electrons will get accelerated and hit the anode hence uh, less amount of radiation less intensity the cutoff will become the cutoff wavelength will become two times larger no wrong so i hope uh, this video was helpful for a quick revision for your ge so i hope you all have enjoyed this video i'll see in the next one take care peace as you have come to the end of the video you get a cookie i'll see in the next one peace take care